Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Wednesday Word. As you can tell, uh, I'm not necessarily live right now, although this is streaming in a live type of format. So please make sure that you're still communicating, that you're talking, that you're liking, that you're sharing this message. Uh, I'm actually on a really short getaway with my wife, really excited about that. And so I wanted to make sure that you still had a lesson tonight as we have reg regularly on our Wednesday Word and we continue our talk in the prophecy of the four winds. We've been talking about this for a while. I'm going to pray. We're going to jump into this. Uh, this may not be as long as our normal Wednesday words, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, pray that you receive. Get ready. Let's go. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for sharing with us what your word has to say about our authority and our responsibility to prophesy with the four winds, to see dry bones get up and step up into their authority in this world, that you use us as representatives of your kingdom to bring change to the world around us. We thank you for that calling, for that responsibility, for who we are, and for speaking into our identity. We're so grateful. In Jesus' name, amen? Amen. Let's jump right into this. Now, I'm going to be looking down a little bit at my screen because it's right here instead of kind of right here. Uh, but that's because I have so much that I want to recap and then some things that I want to speak uh, today that's a bit new. So we've been talking about the four winds, and the four winds are north, south, east, and west. Uh, this prophecy that was given to Ezekiel, and also we found that these winds are referred to throughout Scripture in the Old and the New Testament, and they all have specific purposes. Now, there's a reason why wind is used in this, because wind is uh, in Scripture a supernatural phenomena. Even when we talk about the Holy Spirit, uh, it is the wind or the breath of the Spirit is a part of how He is explained and defined. And this is talking about supernatural activity, the north, the south, the east, and the west wind. And it was our responsibility to be able to be a part of that, co-laborers with what God is trying to fulfill by speaking and prophesying with the wind what God's will is to happen on this earth. The first one that we talked about was the north wind. The north wind is always representative of angelic forces, specifically angelic forces of protection to protect the seed that you have sown, to uh, angelic forces to uh, help guide the way or prepare the way that you're going to go. Uh, also, angelic forces to bring uh, messages and understand and take away fear and all of that. And so a part of our job is to command angels. Uh, there's a lot of believers who have unemployed angels that are around their life. Hebrews 1.7 in the Passion Translation says, I make my angels swift winds and my ministers fiery flames. We are called to speak and to declare that our angelic forces, that those angels that are assigned to my life, I call you to go forward and protect the seed that I have sown until we see the harvest come forth from it. Angels, I call you to go before me and prepare my way that I would not strike my foot against a stone. Angels, I say right now that you are preparing divine connections, that you are preparing uh, my path so that it is easy to find the people that need to be in my life and that I will be safe and secure on my way to fulfilling God's will for my life this day and in the future. Amen. The second thing that we talked about, of course, was the south wind, which is also called the warfare wind. Let me read this again. Zechariah 9, 12 to 14 says, Turn you to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope. Even today do I declare that I will render double unto thee. 
that when I have bent Judah for me, filled the bow with Ephraim, and raised up thy sons, O Zion, against thy sons, O Greece, and made thee as the sword of a mighty man, and the Lord shall be seen over them, and his arrow will go forth as the lightning, and the Lord God shall blow the trump, and shall go with the whirlwinds of the south. So this is interesting. It does talk about the warfare winds of the south. So the south wind is always talking about supernatural warfare. This is not angels for protection. This is angels for offense, for war. It is going against any of the strongholds that the enemy has set up, any of the thrones that the enemy has tried to create, and saying that we are going to dismantle and dethrone everything that evil supernatural powers have tried to institute and hold on to. That is what the whirlwind is. When you hear of whirlwinds in the Bible, it is uh, many times referring to a supernatural warfare against two opposing forces. There is the forces of the Ruach, of the Spirit, the wind of, of God, they are the angelic hosts that are there to fight and to bring deliverance and to cast down anything that the enemy has set up. And then there is also the wind that is against you. The wind that is contrary is what it was referred to in um, in the Gospels when the disciples were rowing and said the wind was contrary. It literally didn't mean, and the wind was going against us. It literally meant the wind was like an enemy that was holding us back. It, they could have used a different term to say, and the wind was going the opposite direction we were. That's not the word they used. They used, the wind was literally an enemy against us. Why? Because it was supernatural. And anytime that you see those warring winds, the contrary wind of the enemy, and the wind of the forces of the angelic hosts, a whirlwind happens, and that is what's going on with the south wind. Now, in that scripture in Zechariah, God says, I made you a bow, I will send my arrows. Arrows don't go without a bow. God says, here's all the arrows, here's the angels, here's everything that is assigned to you. Now you need to release them. I need your bow to release the angelic forces into the fray, into the fight, into those type of things, right? Okay, number three is the east wind. We finally got here <laughs> in our review. I'm trying to do this as fast as I can, but make sure I cover that. The east wind is described as a dry wind from the wilderness or from the desert. It's also called the wind of the wilderness. If you ever catch that in scripture, that's what it's referring to is the east wind. Jeremiah 13, 24 says, Therefore I will scatter them as the stubble that passes away by the wind of the wilderness. So when we talk about that, the stubble are the things that are around what has been sown and what is growing up in God that doesn't need to be there. That's the stubble. The stubble are referring to any people, humans, not just uh, spiritual forces, but people who are not effective and are actually holding back kingdom purposes and kingdom ways from being done. And God says, I will use the east wind to pluck men and women out of positions of authority and power, out of places where they are trying to manipulate or destroy or hinder any type of kingdom advance. And so that's what this is. In fact, the word here for stubble, kashash, there we go, kashash, is literally doesn't just mean stubble, it means difficult, problematic, or troublesome people who are difficult, problematic, and troublesome specifically for the purpose to hinder or stop uh, God's will and kingdom purposes from being accomplished. So we need to prophesy with the east wind is saying that we are dismantling and casting down people in positions of power who are trying to halt or stop or kill kingdom advance. These are people who have been given time to repent, given time to make things right, and have purposely gone away from repentance and toward uh, doing things for the enemy, doing things to promote evil ways and evil powers. And specifically, when we are prophesying against the East Wind, we are saying, God, those people who have 
knowingly stepped into being uh, at, being helpers and co-laborers with evil, we are asking for them to be taken down from their thrones, taken down from their positions of power and authority, taken down from anywhere where they have an opportunity to affect kingdom advance. We say that they are caught. We say that they are exposed. We say that they are brought to justice. And God had me uh, tell you all this and tell me this as well of what we are believing and what we are speaking. He said, I am rightly administering the vindication, justice, and vengeance of heaven on your behalf. Vindication is the fact of proving that what someone did was right or true when the enemy has tried to speak against you and speak against what God has for you to do and say in your life. Justice in its purest form, justice is enforcement of God's right way of doing things. Real justice is enforcement of righteousness. It is enforcement of heaven's way being done here on earth as it is in heaven. And vengeance is very honestly that the thief needs to be caught, exposed, and brought to justice. And God says, I'm doing that in this season. You're going to see vindication, justice, and vengeance. And God says, I am rightly administering it, uh, the, the vindication, just, justice, and vengeance of heaven on your behalf. Now, I've talked about a few things with that, and that God then said, now I need you to release to the people to proclaim the destruction of the big three. The big three representing Jezebel, Python, and Leviathan. We've been talking now, this will be our third week talking about Jezebel. I believe this will be the end of Jezebel, and we will then continue on into the spirit of Python and what we're called to do there. But let me give you a little bit of review on Jezebel, and then today I want to talk about some things that we need to do to make sure that Jezebel is defeated, that well, how we step into our authority and continue to go forward, making sure that we do not allow Jezebel to set up thrones in our lives, in our families, in our workplaces, anything like that. The first thing is we talked about the three characters in the story of Jezebel, that there's Ahab, which is a passive leader that just allows evil to do whatever they want to do through manipulation or, uh, you know, the, the idea of Jezebel. There is, so there's passive like Ahab, there's controlling like Jezebel, and there's supernaturally assertive like Elijah. And we've been saying this for a couple of weeks of who do you want to be? Because the truth is there's a lot of believers who are passive like Ahab. And Jesus spoke to the churches in Revelation. And in Revelation 2, he said, man, there's one thing I have against you. There's one thing that's really stopping you from being all that you're called to be. One thing that's holding you back from everything. And he said that one thing is you tolerate that woman Jezebel. He said, you have brought in tolerance when I, you're not called to be people of tolerance. And that's what the world wants us to be. The world is constantly preaching tolerance. Oh, you know, well, we need to be more tolerant. We need to be more accepting. No, no, no. We need to be more standing for righteousness. We need to be more standing for the truth. Because the Bible never talks about tolerance as being a supernatural gift. It is not a fruit of the Spirit. There is no fruit of the Spirit. It's tolerance. Well, well yeah, but Pastor, uh, one of the fruit of the Spirit is love and it's peace. Yes, absolutely. Love is not me tolerating you. The, I don't understand how people don't get this. If I love you, I don't tolerate when you're doing things that are destructive against you and against others. If I love you, I lovingly call out those things and say, hey, this is destructive uh, in your life and in others, and I want to see that change, right? So there's a difference between love and tolerance. Okay, hallelujah. Uh, <laughs> because here's the thing. If you tolerate, they will dominate. If you tolerate Jezebel, then Jezebel will dominate your life. And usually when I'm talking about a Jezebel spirit, ab absolutely, this is an evil spirit. But beyond being an evil spirit, Jezebel is a person who has allowed the infiltration of an evil spirit either by possession 
or oppression in their life and it is causing havoc in their own personal relationships and uh, in others who are around them, right? Uh, so Ahab is passive. We don't want to be that. We talked about that Jezebel is controlling. Some people are controlling, domineering, overwhelming. See, if you're an Ahab, you let harm happen. If you're a Jezebel, you cause harm to happen. Jezebels in our culture will be shown. I talked about this last week when we were in person. Jezebels in our culture will be shown in rebellion against authority, in pushing against the authority of the Bible. Uh, that could be in deconstructionism, in a whole lot of other very negative forms of trying to be kind of a part of Christianity, but not. Also, Jezebels in our culture will be creating and celeb celebrating counterfeit conscience. It is creating and celebrating a counterfeit conscience. And what do I mean by that? Well, we talked about several ways. One of them is by sexual or gender dysphoria and or identity. Instead of celebrating God-given identity, is going to create a false and a uh, a false conscience, a false vindication of, of something that is not based on truth. Also, it's going to create and celebrate victimhood. That the purpose is celebrate how much of a victim you are. Talk about all the time how you are a victim in this world system. You are a victim in uh, the world is against you. You're a victim because of your, your race. You're a victim because of your sex. You're a victim because of the, you know, the, the patriarchy. You're a victim because we need social justice. We're a victim. Now, look, I understand that there are things that we stand for. I understand that there are times for social justice to be adhered to, but there is a step beyond where, uh, where many people who are being used by the Jezebel spirit in a very real issue in our world have just come to the realization that I will always be a victim. So I need people to always support me and I need people to always take care of me. When we do that, we step away from our authority and we allow whoever has set themselves as the Jezebel over that system or over that way of doing things and say, yes, Jezebel, you just tell me what to do. You just tell me what to fight for. You just tell me how to vote. You just tell me how to do all of these type of things. And that's what the Jezebels in our culture try to set up. And the other one is that Jezebels in our culture are shown by castrating Ahabs with the transgender spirit. The, the Jezebel spirit hates men and wants to do everything that they can to castrate men from any positions of authority or, uh, or power within our world. Demons want to mutilate humans to make a counterfeit creation of them. Remember, Satan cannot create anything. All he does is he's perverting things that are already created. And that's what he's trying to do in our culture is to castrate men from any type of position of authority, uh, from any type of dominance that, that, that men are called to have and say, you need to be passive. You need to be more feminine. You need to be more in touch with your feminine side. No, no, you don't. You need to be who God's called you to be. Hallelujah. See, these three represent the only three areas that people can live from. And that's either the demonic, which is represented in Jezebel. The demonic is always going to be manipulative, controlling, stealing, killing, and destroying. Or you live life by the flesh. That's Ahab. The flesh is like, just follow. Don't rock the boat. Do whatever you're guilted to do. Do whatever you're tempted to do. Just step into it. It'll make life a lot easier. Or do we live life by the Spirit, which is seek kingdom and righteousness above all things. Today, I want to talk about how we defeat the Jezebel spirit. Now that we've opened our eyes to see the Jezebel spirit in its place, we are called to prophesy with the east wind and see the Jezebel spirit destroyed. How do we do that? Number one is this, you have to come out of hiding. In the story of Jezebel, there were prophets of God that were so 
afraid of Jezebel that they ran into a cave to hide away from her so that they did not so that she did not take their heads. We also see Elijah who stepped into a cave to hide away from Jezebel. But you cannot walk in supernatural authority by hiding. Hallelujah. You know, a common top tech uh, a common tactic of someone who's operating under a Jezebel spirit uh, is to turn the wrongdoing back onto the person who's trying to expose it. So if there's a person that's like, hey, I'm speaking against uh, this policy, I'm speaking against this wrongdoing, I'm prophesying against uh, I'm prophesying with the east wind against these men and women who are trying to promote unholy lifestyles and are trying to push against the truth of God's word. And what they'll do is they'll say, oh, you're evil, you're unloving, you're, you're a bad person, you're trying to start riots, you're trying to rock the boat. And, and that's what the Jezebel spirit tries to do, is that they want you to just be quiet, Believe what you want, but do it behind closed doors. Don't speak about any of these things because the Jezebel spirit wants believers to stay in hiding. You can believe all you want. Just don't come out and say anything. You have to come out of hiding. It is time to be supernaturally assertive and strong. Matthew 5.15 says it this way. No one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it will give light to everyone in the house. You are called to be a light on a hill. You are called to be seen as standing out from the politically correct culture the world is trying to promote. The church is not politically correct. Neither will it ever be. The church is not going to be accepted by society. So stop trying to hide and make people like you. Stop being Ahab and step up to be Elijah. The next one is you need to reclaim your identity. Reclaim your identity. When Ahab saw Elijah coming, he tried to speak into who Elijah was. He tried to put a false identity upon Elijah. 1 Kings 18, 17 to 18, it says it this way. When he, Ahab, saw Elijah, he said to him, Is that you, you troubler of Israel? I, and Elijah goes, Whoa, hey, hold on. What are you saying against me? That's not who I am. That's not my identity. That's not who I've been called to be. He said, I have not made trouble for Israel, Elijah replied. But you and your father's family, they have. You've abandoned the Lord's commands and you have followed the Baals. There is a battle over identity here. Ahab tried to call Elijah a troubler. Ahab tried to put false accusations against him. Ahab tried to speak into his identity and Elijah needed to make a decision. If I'm going to tear down Jezebel, then I won't let any Jezebel or any Ahab who's trying to make sure that we don't rock the boat, that we don't mess with anything. Oh, you're just trying to make trouble. Oh, you're just trying. No, no, I'm trying to bring truth. I'm trying to speak into the, I'm prophesying with the east wind that any of these false accusations, that any of these false truths that have been tried to uh, promoted by the Jezebel spirit and accepted by the Ahabs who are just going to be passive and let anybody do whatever they want to do is destroyed. So no, you will not call me a troubler. You will not call me the troublemaker. You're the troublemaker. I'm here to bring truth. I'm here to bring what God has to say. Elijah had to respond, I am not the troubler. You are the troubler. If you have been under the influence of a Jezebel spirit for any time, you will start to forget who you really are. If you start to become an Ahab and you just accept Jezebel spirits, you will start to question who you really are. And you need to go through scripture and find the identity scriptures, which are in Christ, in him, in whom, anything that you see like that in the New Testament, those are identity scriptures that tell you about who you are. I'll tell you some things of who I am. 
I'm no longer a slave. I'm God's child and heir, Galatians 4, 7. I'm God's special possession, 1 Peter 2, 9 to 10. I'm seated with God in heavenly places and with authority in heavenly realms. Ephesians 2, 6, I'm a new creation. Old things are passed away. All things have become new. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, I am complete in him, uh, Colossians 2.10, I'm set apart for a purpose, for a season, for a people. Hebrews 10.10, 10, I am more than a conqueror through him who loves me. Romans 8.37, controlling narcissistic people will try to get you to forget who you really are. That's a part of the job of Jezebel. For you to forget who you are, and so then you can just submit to the controlling and domineering spirit and authority of the world system or of your job system or of whatever. Uh, the truth is, and a Jezebel, again, is not a man or a woman. It can be either or, man or woman, because Jezebel is a spirit. It is a spirit that acts as a domineering and dominant and narcissistic characteristic. The third thing is this, you need to proclaim and prophesy no matter the consequence. We have to have a doggedness of making a decision that I'm here and on this earth and in this country and on this job and in this family and in this church for a reason. God placed me here for such a time as this, such a place as this, such a people as this. So I'm going to prophesy with the east wind and I'm going to claim that evil men and women who are still setting, setting up in uh, realms of authority and thrones in any of the areas that I am at are taken down by the east wind. Uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 15. Let's go there really quickly. Woo! Jezebel is afraid of the consequences that will happen if people find out their manipulation. So they want to do is they want to silence the church. They want to silence the prophets. They want to silence the people who are called to speak and to declare change to happen in the atmosphere. 1 Corinthians 14, 5 uh, the Apostle Paul says it this way, I would that you all spoke in tongues, but more than you all speaking in tongues, I would rather you prophesy. For greater is he that prophesies than he that speaks tongue, uh, with tongues, unless he interprets that the church may receive edifying. Basically, he says this, I want you to prophesy. Like, more, more than anything else, I need you, what is prophesying? It is declaring God's will into a situation. It is speaking out either current or future utterances for God to, uh, to bring kingdom in a situation, to enact change in an atmosphere with the prophetic words and utterance given by the Holy Spirit spoken out of a human mouth. The Apostle Paul says, I would rather that you prophesy than anything else. So right now, we're going to prophesy with the east wind. And you can repeat this after me. You can type some of this out. You can record this and go back over it if you want. But we're going to speak some things right now with the east wind. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I come before you right now. Lord, I enforce the victory of Jesus Christ. The devil is defeated. He's dethroned. He's disarmed and he is destroyed. Today, I am enforcing the victory of a child of God. I have power and authority over every demonic spirit and over every Jezebel, rebellion, witchcraft, deception, and lie that the enemy tries to stand up for. I take authority over every demonic spirit that is trying to set up thrones in my nation, in my job, in my workplace, in my church, in my family, in my life. I say they are destroyed and cast down right now in the name of Jesus and with my heart in the right place. I go against the spirit of Jezebel. I forgive all of the people that have caused me any trauma or any harm. I remove all entry points in my life for the spirit of Jezebel to try to enter in. I take responsibility 
for, for being under the authority of the spirit of Jezebel. I recant it. I renounce it right now in Jesus' name. I renounce all control. I renounce all intimidation and manipulation. I renounce any demonic spirit that has tried to attach itself to my mind or my heart or my emotions in Jesus' name. I break the power of witchcraft, uh, deception and seduction and sorcery and intimidation, knowing that in the name of Jesus, all authority must bow. I repent of any rebellion, any pride, any control, manipulation, or disrespect that I have spoken against ministry leaders or any person in authority and power that you have set. I renounce any wrong accusations that are carrying witchcraft's message, the, any false motives or hidden agendas. I come against them. I stand against, I rebuke, and I bind and banish to hell the spirit of Jezebel in any area of my life or in any realm that I have authority. I break and smash the power of manipulation, lies, denial, and deception caused by the Jezebel spirit. I rebuke all spirits of false teaching and false prophecy that is connected to Jezebel and, in, and has been agreeing with a politically correct doctrine uh, of tolerance. I speak against it. I pray right now for spouses to be delivered from pride, from uh, from infatuation, from seduction, from lust, from perversion, fornication, uh, adultery, and witchcraft that is plotted with the spirit of Jezebel to destroy marriages. I say right now, I pray for husbands and wives to be delivered from immorality and idolatry. I bind up the powers of the witch and I seal them right now as you have given us the power to bind and to, to release from heaven. I pray that the wickedness of Jezebel be revealed to the whole world, that you would open up the eyes of the blind, that they would see those manipulative stances. You would, they would see the obvious untruths. They would see the ways of manipulation and have their eyes open to her sorceries and her ways of trying to manipulate and seduce. I open my eyes and recognize that wayward men and women have covertly operated in Jezebel spirit. I recognize every time that the Jezebel spirit tries to step up and torment men's soul. Every time that they try to rise up and manipulate and torment the church from being able to fulfill its purpose. I say right now that her hands are off kingdom businesses and kingdom advances. I say right now that the Jezebel spirit hands are off of anything that would try to uh, to hold back the kingdom from advancing in uh, in having property in having places in having uh, in having influence in having platforms Lord right now I open my eyes. I receive right now the revelation from your Holy Spirit. I open up my eyes and I recognize. I open up my eyes to see these things and I surrender to you, Jesus. I surrender to you. To say, I will be supernaturally assertive. I, we repent from any supernatural passivity that we have held on to. We will not allow Jezebel to continue to manipulate, to control, and dominate. We, I, I, we call right now for pastors and spiritual leaders who have just given in to government intimidation, who have just given in to the intimidation of culture around them, who have just given in to the intimidation of others. And we say right now that Ahab's eyes would open up from their slumber and would step up into the supernatural assertiveness of an Elijah. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Hey, it's giving time. Hallelujah. Hey, I know that these opportunities to give are important. We do this every single time for a reason. And our main reason 
is because I want you to have an opportunity to engage in and use your faith and follow the Holy Spirit in a very practical way, and that's in your giving. When you give, you are saying, I'm listening to what the Holy Spirit is saying, and I'm going to be supernaturally assertive. And I'm gonna say, okay, right now, I'm gonna give something. I think it's important every time you hear the word that you give something. You're like, I don't have a whole lot to give. I guarantee you, you got something that you can give. Why? Because you are purposely saying, I received this, I received the revelation, I'm sowing seed into good ground. Now, that might just be, you know, something small, something little. That's okay. What I'm saying is, you should make a determination to be supernaturally assertive, to move forward in the things of God and not just passive and saying, well, I've received, I've received, thank you. Thank you for receiving, thank you for giving. I appreciate it, I'll receive it all. Well, guess what, that's, that, that's supernaturally passive. You need to be supernaturally assertive. That means you need to step up and say like, you know what, I'm gonna give something because I received from this. I'm gonna give something because it meant something to me because I'm agreeing with what the Holy Spirit's saying and I'm gonna step up in my supernatural assertiveness by giving into good ground today. And that's what you're doing. You are praying. I, I believe that every time that you that we come together, you're praying and you're saying, all right, Holy Spirit, tell me what I'm to give. All right, Holy Spirit, I'm here to receive. And there's several ways that you can give. You'll see uh, above the screen, it, there's a number that <laughs> says you can text to give or you could go online to dallas.faithforlife.com dallas.faithforlife.cc slash give and that is an opportunity for you to give as well love you guys so much hey i covet your prayers that's what the apostle paul said that's what i say right now right now i'm in just a moment of being able to receive and to rest and uh just to to be away for a short amount of time i'm gonna look for some more opportunities to do that because i think it's important as a leader to be able to find uh lengthened sabbaths and moments where we can separate and get away and really receive so that we're on fire all the time so hey pray for your pastor Pray for us to have a, a great time right now and to really receive the rest from God as we continue to go forward in the things of God and continue to be supernaturally assertive as Elijah's in this house and in our world. Love you guys so much. Have a wonderful week. I'll see you on Sunday, 9 a.m. or 11 a.m. here at Faith for Life.